In an earlier movie, we created a character controller that could walk around the scene using the simple move function. This allowed our player to be able to walk around without falling through the floor or passing through walls. In this movie, what I want to do is to take everything we've seen so far, combine it together to produce this scene in which the character can now jump. So we have the ability to make the character jump and then fall to the ground again under the effects of gravity. So off screen, I've gone ahead and created that scene. I want to show you the result here and then have a look at the code to see how this works. So I'm going to press play on the toolbar. And again, just as before, I can use the A, W, S, A and D keys as well as the arrow keys to move this character around. By pressing the space bar on the keyboard, I can jump and he falls down again to the ground. So we have a jump functionality going on here. So I'm going to press stop on the toolbar here. Now this code, you can find this in the course companion files in the scenes mover folder. I'm going to reopen the player controller script that we started creating before, but the code for this has now changed quite substantially. So just as before, we can see we have the player controller class. We also have the awake function, which retrieves a reference to the character controller and the transform component, just as we did before. In addition, we also have the fixed update function that is synchronized to the physics loop. And we also have the cross-platform input manager to retrieve input data using the horizontal and vertical axes. Again, similar ground, we have the functionality for rotating the object using the quaternion Euler function so that we can use the left and the right keys, that is horizontal input, to turn the character to look in different directions. But after this functionality is completed, the next set of lines do something very different. In particular, we are building up a translation in local space. So again, to the move forward, to make the objects move forward along the forward vector, I'm using the velocity.z axis because z is the local forward axis, and I'm using the vertical input multiplied by the speed in order to calculate that forward displacement. Then later we are asking the question as to whether we should jump. Should the player jump if they are pressing the space bar? And if we do, then we apply the jump force, that is the strength of our jump, to the Y vector. So if I scroll up further, you will see that we have a public float jump force variable, which specifies the strength of the jump. How far into the air should we jump? The jump force describes that. The next floating point variable defines the distance between our feet and the ground. This defines how close we should be to the floor in order for the character to be considered grounded, that is touching the ground. We also have this boolean variable that tells us whether the character is touching the ground or not. The reason this is important is because we don't want the character to be able to double jump, to press the space bar many times in order to continually climb into the sky gradually by multiple jumping. We just want to jump once only when the character is touching the ground. So I'm going to scroll down again. So you can see that in local space, we're applying the jump force to the Y axis. And then immediately afterwards, we're using the physics.gravity constant in order to pull the character back down to the ground under the effects of gravity. And to apply this local transformation, we are using the character controller move function. Now, previously we used simple move, but this time we're using move. And the key difference is that the simple move function doesn't really allow you to jump, but the move function does. In particular, we're taking the local transformation, the velocity vector, and we're using the transform direction function that we've seen before to convert the local displacement into world space. So that's what's going on here with this move function. But now if I move up just a little bit more, you can see we have a function called distance to ground. This tells us, or is used to calculate, whether the character is close enough to the ground to be classified as grounded. And this calls a custom function that we've made called distance to ground, which is specified here. It returns a float which is the distance in meters between the character's feet and the ground. Now to calculate this, I'm using a function called physics.raycast, and we're going to be looking at that function in much more detail later in this course. But ultimately, the physics raycast can shoot an invisible line or laser from a particular point in the scene and determine where that ray intersects. So in this case, we're shooting an invisible line from the feet of the character downwards and then calculating where that intersects with the floor so that we can see how much distance there is between the feet and the ground. So I'm just going to close this code again and go back to the Unity editor. 
The one small change I have made is I have selected the environment here and I've attached this to the ground layer. You can see in the object inspector that this ground has been assigned to the layer called ground. You can easily create a new layer for yourself by clicking on this drop down list and choosing add layer to create a new layer. I've done that here to create the ground layer. If I now select the player here in the hierarchy panel, you can see under the player controller we have the variables that we've used, but we also have a ground layer field which is used in our script to determine what the ground is. We don't want, for example, for the player to think that tables and chairs in the scene are necessarily part of the ground. We only want the ground object to be the object that we used for testing for intersections between the feet and the floor. That's what the ground layer is there to achieve. So in using this code, we now have the ability to create a character that can move around the scene, and by pressing the space bar, we can make the character jump and move around just as we need it to do. This is very important for creating any kind of human-like character that has to move around and jump. Excellent work.